All right. Thank you so much for tuning in to another wrestling podcast. I'm JB, and today I'm speaking to someone a little unorthodox, a little new to the scene, but not really. He's been around for a while, making huge waves in professional wrestling. Darby Allen is joining us. Darby, thanks so much for coming on the show. How are you doing tonight? Awesome. Awesome. I love to hear that. Now, Darby, you are indeed a household name. And if you if you got to think back for a few minutes, that's uh, is that is it a shock to you knowing that you only began your wrestling career less than four years ago? Does it surprise you that you're a household name already? At times, yeah, but other times, absolutely not. I got to ask, what was breaking into wrestling like? You know, how were you received by the the other wrestlers and uh the fans and just kind of how was it to kind of jump into the world of professional wrestling uh a lot of people obviously didn't understand me because i said i wanted what's your character what's your gimmick oh myself no what's your character what's your gimmick you have to be something no i'm myself i feel like that's good enough and then uh you just gotta shut people up and that's what exactly what i did you know, wrestling's a sport with a kind of already short shelf life. Uh, why do you do such risky maneuvers? Because I have so much outside influences that I want to do outside of wrestling, like filmmaking and clothing company that I'm starting, that if wrestling ended, I would just do that. So I don't give a shit. <laughs> People, I don't play by anybody else's rules. They got to understand I will be doing crazy things inside that ring or outside of that ring. So just leave me alone. The uh, the riskiest of all of your moves perhaps is the coffin drop. Why did you choose that as your, your signature go-to move? Because I don't fly to look pretty. I fly to hurt. And me just falling back on someone, I don't need to do three rotations to do that. I could just do it and just fall back on him and uh that gets the job done so yeah i'd say that was a a go-to thing because it just looks painful but it doesn't look pretty all right all right now um with all those high-risk maneuvers and uh the fact that prior to professional wrestling you were a professional skateboarder uh what has been your worst injury so far in your career? Probably broke my uh, elbow with a shovel. That was pretty. But when I uh, got a concussion at a progress show, that was pretty bad as well because concussions are no joke. And when you feel that, and then for a week straight, you're just like feeling out of the loop and feeling like just totally crazy. Like you don't even know what up and down is. And it just makes you just feel like, are you ever going to be new normal again? So I say mentally the uh, concussion, but physically the broken elbow. You came to professional wrestling, you know, despite having a career as a professional skateboarder. What drew you into the world of professional wrestling? Why Why did you decide to make that switch? Physical. Um, it's, like, it's like a drama. It's like a play, but it's like physical. So it's like, you know, you think about like stunts on Broadway, like, me falling on a skateboard um, sometimes in, a, in front of like a small group of people, it sucks. But if you fall in front of like thousands of people in wrestling, it's like it's like worth it. You know what I mean? It's like mentally like okay, I like that. So uh, I would say I just like uh, being like telling a story, going out there and telling a story in front of a bunch of people and. Like I said, physical Broadway. Awesome, awesome. Now, um, obviously, skateboarding and wrestling are kind of wildly different, but there there probably is some some of the same things going on there. But um, you know, coming from never skateboarding before to where you're at now, and coming to never wrestling before to where you're at, which do you feel was the much more difficult one to kind of master? skateboarding by far and it was way more painful really really wow um, painful. now you spent lots of time on the independent scene um and wrestled very very high profile matches at you know wwn 
evolve. Um, you know, taking on everybody from Walter to Keith Lee. Um, what were some of your personal highlights during this time? Like, what were the things that really got you, you know, stoked about your time in professional wrestling during that time on the Indies? Mm. I don't know, like matches against Walter, probably. You know, I, I don't know exactly what your first match was. Um, you know, I don't know what your training was exactly like, but um, to go from that to about to debut on TNT, you know, Wednesdays, um, and, like, what, what's what been the most surreal moment of your career so far? Like, what have you just, like, after it's happened, maybe some time passed, and you were just like, wow, I can't believe that actually happened. Uh, at AEW by far, because it's the first time I can actually make a living off of wrestling. I don't have to be living in my car. So, yeah, it's definitely anything at AEW. You've, you've finished up most of your indies. You you do have some stuff up in the Northeast to, to finish, which we'll talk about just in a second. But, um, you know, you just mentioned it, AEW, the big time, no longer living in a car, making money professionally. Um, the world gets to see what you do on a, on a weekly basis. Um, but do you, do you feel like you're going to miss the indie some? Like, do you feel like that there's parts of it that are going to kind of, you know, tug at your heartstrings a little bit? I don't know. That's such a hard one because, uh, I feel like people, man, they demand so much from your body on the indies with no payoff, you know, these promoters that want you to kill yourself, they're not going to be there in the hospital bed with you. They're not going to pay your hospital bill, but they want you to kill yourself on their show so they can get YouTube hits. So there's parts of me that I don't give a shit. And then there's other parts where I'm like, you know, the fans and the intimacy of everything. Of course, you know, you're going to miss that. Okay. All right. Now, um, I mentioned, you know, here in the Northeast, uh, you are currently the Northeast Wrestling Champion. Um, What's that title mean to you? And what do you think of your upcoming opponent, King Brian Anthony? You go one-on-one with him October 19th, live in Bethany, Connecticut. Being the champion at uh, Northeast Wrestling, it's a good it's a, like a good checkpoint on my career because when I first started there, like you'd always hear about it. They have all these like super shows, like Mysterio, like the list goes on of these like just crazy names and stuff like that. So, uh you know, like that stuff, uh, always like, okay, like to be on the top of that company is a good checkpoint. Um, but like King Brian is a guy like, um, that, you know, I, I, he's been doing this a lot, lot, lot longer. And, uh, I think he has a big chip on his shoulder coming into this match for sure. Because he sees that I'm kind of out the door and, you know, he wants me to like just. He wants to be the one taking that from me, so taking that championship from me. So, you know, of course, there's gonna be a lot of anger with him because he's been doing this a lot longer and stuff like that. And he sees a little skateboard <laughs> punk rock guy coming in and stealing his uh his uh stealing his spotlight for sure. All right, all right. Well, um. The life of a wrestler uh, is often spent, you know, traveling, going from place to place, being on the road a lot. Um, when you are on the road, whether it be on, you know, flying from place to place or driving from place to place, what kind of keeps you sane while you're you're traveling? What what do you do to keep you going? You know, just skateboarding and uh, music and just you know working out and stuff like that. It just keeps me like it's my uh, therapy. All right, you just mentioned music. What are what what does a Darby Allen listen to on a daily basis? Mm, all types of stuff, but mainly uh, anarcho punk, like Crass and uh, a bunch of bands like that. And um, yeah, like uh, just stuff that makes me want to take on the world, like Black Flag and all these other bands and stuff like that. You know, so there's a big, big list of things. All right. Um, if you had to say, you know, just knowing that everybody doesn't really know you, they just see you, you know, in snippets on television or, you know, matches or whatever, what would you say the biggest misconception um, that fans or other wrestlers may have about you is? 
is that I want to be wrestling forever. All right. All right. Uh, I don't. So you, uh, you mentioned that you are coming out with like a clothing line. Um, if the door, you know, shuts on wrestling tomorrow or the next day or the next day, um, you know, do you see yourself going back to skateboarding? Do you see yourself with this clothing line? What What is uh, on the horizon for Darby Allen? Uh, my filmmaking and my clothing line, for sure. We saw recently, and I can't believe it, but you did the uh, Death Nut Challenge, and uh, it was pretty pretty brutal um, to, to watch. But uh, what are some other, you know, like crazy challenges that you've done um, – that maybe people haven't got to see? I've done so much weird challenges. I don't even know where to start. I uh, filled up a hot, I filled up a bathtub full of like over a hundred hot dogs and I took a bath in that and it's fucking nasty. <laughs> but, and then I got pepper sprayed and then, uh, oh, just a lot of stuff. I've been, you know, a lot of challenges that I've had that were uh, far worse than the death Hat challenge. Yes. yes. Um, now, Obviously, with crazy stuff like that going on, people may think, God, he must have been drunk or whatever to do that. But obviously, and um, some fans may not know this, but you are straight edge. So um, why did you make that decision to be straight edge? And what does being straight edge mean to you? I made that decision to be straight edge because I didn't. I just like being in control of my brain at all times. And, uh, and if I fail in this life... If I don't achieve everything I wanted to achieve, I can't blame it on alcohol. I can't blame it on drugs. I'm 100% full responsibility of not achieving everything I set out to do. You've already had some amazing moments in AEW, some you know highlight reel moments, but with uh, October 2nd right around the corner and uh, you being on TNT, Dynamite, Wednesday nights, um, what are you after in AEW? Why are you, why are you there? Because it's a company that gives me the chance to be myself. That's like the only reason I really, really like fall in love with AEW is because it's like here, be yourself. And, um, that's all I've ever wanted, you know? So. All right. Well, we look forward to seeing you live, um, every week now. And, um, is there anything else that you want to get off your chest before you go tonight? No, nah, man. I'm just getting ready for fucking DC. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. We will probably see you live also at Northeast Wrestling in Bethany, Connecticut, uh, Autumn and Bush, October 19th. But uh, until then, just uh, congrats on all your success and uh, keep up all the great work. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, man.